Percy arrive at the quarry to collect his stone for his freight cars. Snow and frost lay everywhere, and there's not much of a sound. Percy ventured further. He found Mavis, the new diesel engine, resting in the shelter of some rocks. Cheer up, Mavis, he whistled. Mavis was still remembering the trouble she had with trucks. Manager said I will listen to his advice. He said I'm no longer in business jordering down Toby's line. Toby's a fuss pot. Toby has forgotten more about freight cars than you will never know, replied Percy. You must put the cars where he wants them. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to take these stones to the harbor. Mavis likes Percy, but she still won't listen to his advice. Why shouldn't I go on Toby's line? The siding arrangement was awkward. To put the cars where Toby wants them, Mavis had to make several journeys. She started to make a plan. If we use the teeniest bit of Toby's line, she said to her driver, we could save all this bother. Her driver expected nothing, but allowed them to go as the first level crossing. A few days later, the weather changed. As the snow was melted, the quarry grew busy again. Some trains were so long that before leaving the cars for Toby, Mavis had to go beyond the level crossing with them. Now for her plan. Mavis had to go further down the line without seeming her fault. Can you keep a secret? She asked the freight cars. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell them no one I ask you? The cars promised. But while Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the cars himself. The cars decided to bump him instead. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes were on. This is the signal for the freight cars. On! 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 They yelled. Toby was away with the freight cars screaming and yelling behind him. No one realized that the melted snow had caused the stream ahead into a torrent, and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rainbow fell like a titan to throw across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They became nearer and nearer to the bridge. It was all or nothing now. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails, with his wheels onto the type rope over the abyss. Mavis was horrified and quickly came to the rescue. The workman anchored Toby with ropes while she pulled the freight cars away. Then she held Toby back to safety. I am so sorry about the cars, said Mavis. I didn't think how you managed to stop them in time. Oh well, said Toby. My driver told me about circus people who walk tightropes, but I didn't fancy doing it myself. Later, Sir Topham had arrived. A very smart piece of work, he said. Mavis, you did very well, I hear. It was my fault about the car, sir. If I could... Could what? Come down the line sometime, sir. Toby said he'll show me what to do. Certainly, said Sir Topham Hatt, if your manager agreed. And so it was arranged. Now Mavis is as happy as can be, and Sir Topham Hatt thinks she's really useful indeed.